So connected rates of change and relating rates of change. This is the very, very last part of differentiation. Boys, we've, we've started the lesson, so can you just come in quietly? Um, and relating rates of change. This is it's not really going to pull in any new concepts. Um, there may be a, new, a couple of new ideas that we might be doing here, but I don't think there's any really new teaching of stuff that's happening. So hopefully you've got these booklets in front of you so that we're ready to go. Best way to kind of look at one of these questions is actually to read what's happening in this question and just to dive in with an example. I think that's going to be the way that we will um, be able to do best on this. So it says determine the rate of change of the area A of a circle when the radius R equals 3 centimetres given that the radius is changing at a rate of 5 centimetres s to the minus 1. OK, there's a lot of stuff going on in this question that we need to even figure out what's happening here. So I'm actually going to kind of start at the last part of the question, and then we're going to try and say what the beginning part of the question was talking to us about. OK? It is talking to us about a circle, and its circle's radius is changing at a rate of 5 centimetres s to the minus 1. OK, I want to deal with this. What does centimetres s minus 1 mean? Yeah, this s to the minus 1 means centimetres over seconds or centimetres per second. And we're talking about a circle, and its radius is changing at 5 centimetres per second. So what does that mean is happening to the circle? Ronak? Good. Yeah, although actually, because we're, we're going to sort of, it, it is talking about the gradient of it. We're actually kind of moving now into like a geometry kind of area. So what we have to imagine in this situation is that every second, a circle's radius is getting bigger by five centimetres. I'm just going to do a bit of a drawing. It's not going to be accurate, but it needs to be going out bigger at a constant rate. So it's going to be something that like this, like it's getting bigger at a constant rate every second. And we're trying to think about how this circle behaves, how its area behaves. Now, the radius is increasing at a constant rate. It's just got a number five there, which means that every second it's going up by a constant amount. Do you think that the area is increasing at a constant rate? Ekrim? Uh, you find the area to be kind of square? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The area is pi r squared, so it won't be constant because it's got an r squared, whereas the radius is just going, radius and r squared are going to be different. So as a circle gets bigger and bigger, its area is getting bigger and bigger, quicker and quicker, because when you have a large number and you square it, it becomes even larger. If you have a small number and you square it, it does become larger, but not in quite the same extreme way. I mean, if you think about squaring 3, you get 9. Squaring 100, and you get 10,000. So things get bigger. <laughs> I did do that right, yeah? Too many zeros. When you square things, it's getting bigger. The area is going to get bigger at a constant rate. Uh, not at a constant rate, at a variable rate. OK, so we've understood this last part. It's saying that the radius is changing at this particular rate. We've understood the units that we've got here. Now I want to think about the word rate. And there's a bit of a clue here. It says, whenever you see the word rate, you think of something dt. And I suppose if you think about your understanding of the word rate already, I think with the other class, I talked about if you're going to say that someone is working at a very quick rate and someone is working at a slow rate, the key thing is to compare the rate that someone is working at is you measure them in the same amount of time. You might say, how much work is someone completing per hour? That's how you compare how fast people are going. So I know maybe some people do their homework at a fast rate. They get lots of homework done in one hour, and some people are slow, so they, do it in, uh, they don't get as much work done in an hour. Pardon? The circumference. Uh, the circumference. Yeah, there are, some, there are some relationships between the area of a circle to do with different rates, but that's, that's going to be separate to this, kind of, this type of question. But you're right, there are some relationships between like, circumference and area and differentiation, but we'll, we'll touch on that very lightly. So it's saying that the radius is changing at this rate. Rate will always mean that you've got something dt. 
So how could I say um, actually this thing that we've got down here, the rate of change of the radius is 5, seeing as that's the part of the question we're talking about. We've just said it's going to be something dt. What should be on the top? Yeah, we're saying how is the radius changing with respect to time? If you have something like dy by dx, we're saying how is the y-coordinate changing with respect to the x-coordinate? Or for every time the x-coordinate is increasing by some unit, how much is the y-coordinate increasing by? Same thing, every time the time is increasing by one unit, how much is the radius increasing by? And they've told us that the rate of change, rate of change of radius is 5. So we know that dr dt is equal to 5. Now let's actually read the beginning part of the question and see what the question is even asking us. So we know that there's this circle that's getting bigger and bigger, and it says find the rate of change of the area of a circle when its radius is 3 centimetres. So we're trying to find the rate of change of the area. Well, again, we've got this word rate or rate of change, which means it's going to be something dt. <coughs> Good. The rate of change of the area is going to be dA dt. And our particular question is going to be interested at the rate of change of the area when r equals 3. Because, Ekram said, the rate of change of the area is going to be different depending on how big the circle is. We said as it gets bigger, the rate of change of the area is going to get faster and faster. It's if you can't imagine that, it's very difficult to imagine. You don't have to be able to predict these things. It's not something I should expect you to do, but you should know that it's not going to be constant there. And then the last thing that we're asking about is what the area of a circle is. So just wind back to GCSE. The area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. OK, so here comes the part where we're now going to use this concept of connected rates of change. OK, rates of change means there's going to be some stuff to do with something dt. And the fact that they're connected is going to remind us of some other things we've seen before. It's going to remind us of some of the things we've seen with the chain rule. Now, I am trying to find out the rate of change of the area. This is the thing I'm trying to find out in the question. I am trying to find out what dA by dt is. Yes, we're going to just see something that's going to link us to this idea of it being connecting rates of change together. Now, dA dt is a combination of other rates of change that can, can be combined together. The way we do this is we start off by saying, well, actually, I know that dA by dt is the same as this kind of multiplication, but there's something about the denominator here and the numerator that must be true to make the left-hand side and the right-hand side equivalent. There must be dr in these places. If there's dr in these places that we've got here, We've actually made a true statement. I'm going to do the dr in a slightly different color to remind us what we've just done. We've just kind of pulled this dA dt apart into two connected um, derivatives. Okay, And we can see that they're true because effectively the drs are kind of cancelling out. The reason that this is good is because I know some of these facts. I know that dr by dt is 5, but I don't have dA by dr. I can't find dA by dt, I can, find, I can find dA by dr by using this statement that we have here. And this is how nearly all these questions are going to be structured. You're going to come up with some kind of formula, and you're going to differentiate that formula to use it later on in a question. right? So if a equals pi r squared, if I differentiate this with respect to r, I will come up with this statement that I've got here. So Differentiating this, I'm going to just actually erase that and just move it along a bit so I've got a bit more space. So I've got the area is equal to pi r squared. If I differentiate with respect to r, I get dA by dr, which is 2 pi r. OK, 2 pi r. Come in. Hey, Harry. <laughs> so that's interesting. That's the thing that Rayhan was just talking about, that the area of a circle, when you differentiate it, you get the circumference of a circle. If you integrate the area, you could have a think about what you might get. But you don't. Well, you, I guess you could have a think about that. You get, you get something to do with volume. I can't quite remember how it is. It doesn't give you the exact thing of the volume. 
it gives you a quarter of the volume. I can't quite remember why for the moment, but I can have a look at that. So we've now got the dA by dr is equal to 2 pi r. Imagine that this didn't say dA by dr. Imagine this was just a different kind of question. And the reason I'm saying this is because you're going to do a question like this in a moment. Imagine it said dr by dA instead of dA by dr. I could just take the reciprocal of this, couldn't I? So the example you're about to do for me after this, you're going to have to take the reciprocal of your derivative. Just remember that for when you get stuck in the next thing that I'm going to ask you to do. Right, so now we have that dA by dt is equal to these two things, which are our connected rates of change. Remember how we did that by taking the top part and the bottom part and like separating it and pulling it into two pieces. dA by dr is 2 pi r. And dr dt is 5. So the rate of change of the area is 10 pi r, which is exactly what Ekram was saying. When the radius of the circle is bigger, the rate of change of the area, how quickly the area is growing, is also going to be bigger because it's with respect, it's got r in there. But we don't want the rate of change of the area generally. We want the rate of change of the area when r is equal to 3. So our rate of change of the area is 10 pi multiplied by 3, which is 30 pi. You could possibly leave it as 30 pi, but because this is a, an exam -y type of question, because it's like a numerical kind of question, we'd probably do 30 pi as a number and say that it is 94.2 something to three significant figures. Any ideas what the units should be for dA by dt? This dA by dt, what the units should be? Yeah, why, th why though? It is correct. It is centimetres squared s minus 1. Why? Because it's with respect to time, and it's how the area is growing with respect to time. So when the radius is 3 centimetres, the area is getting bigger by 94.2 centimetres squared per second. But the weird thing is, as the radius is getting bigger, the rate of change of the area is also getting bigger. It's not getting bigger every second by 94.2, because the next second, the radius has changed. So the area is getting bigger quicker and quicker and quicker. Okay. So I just want to do one last thing about units before I then ask you to have a go at a question here. <coughs> centimetres squared here is because area is measured in centimetres squared and time <coughs> is measured in seconds. The dr by dt is centimetres per second, and that's because the radius is measured in centimetres and dt is measured in seconds. So there's some really nice clues in the question. When it says five centimetres per second, you know that it's not going to be dA dt. It has to be d something dt, where the something has to be a measure of some kind of length, like a radius or a width or something. Okay. Um, I wonder if there's any other units we could talk about. Um, those are the most important units, I think, that we talk about here. Although I suppose you could think about dA by dr, that the units, what do we think the units of dA by dr would be? Yeah, because you've got centimetres squared per centimetre, so which is just kind of centimetres, okay? But it doesn't make as much sense to us as sense to us as humans, because we have a very familiar idea of with respect to time. And when you talk about speed, you're all when you say, "Oh, you're going at five miles per hour," that's a rate per hour. So it's how we're pretty used to describing things as humans. So I'm going to leave this slide up on the board. The most, most important thing is when you start off with your, the thing you're looking for, you pull it apart into those two different fractions. They're not fractions, but they're behaving like fractions. You have got a question that looks like this to do. Part A is about the cross-sectional area of this cylinder. It is just about the cross-section. Don't think it's about the volume. Part B of the question is about the volume and is so a little bit different. So don't try and do volume for part A. It's got nothing to do with volume. It's just to do with the cross-sectional area of that circle. I'm going to leave it up on this page here for you to look at, but you're to have a look um, at that next question for me.